Greetings everyone, it's John from Marquee TV. I have uh, the privilege to have beside me uh, the head winemaker for uh, Penfolds, Peter Gago. Peter was just in town, we did an extensive tasting of all the new releases of 2008. Okay. Peter, welcome, it's great to see you again. Thanks you for coming. Yes, thank you. You do these whirlwind tours every year. Cool. <laughs> so what is it, six <laughs> weeks on the road? Off for this trip, not all of them are like that. Uh, okay. we, we started off in France for Vin Expo. Right, right. Things. So they're not all like this. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, but Vin Expo, what, what was the what was weather, 35? The Vin Expo, one of the best we've had in recent times. Really? Yeah, nothing like 2003, nothing like 89. I just avoid it, there's just too many people. But we're here, yeah. I've been on a, actually a quest because, uh, well, not only, well, the, first of all, the Penfolds wines, they're, they're great, they're, they're classic, it's what's Australia, you've sort of kept the the integrity of what Australia has done to get to their reputation and now it's sort of been, he's taken a belly punch in the last little while. Australian wines. Australian wines. Yeah. Yeah. But you guys, I mean, your, your, your wines um, have, have kept their authenticity. And just, and just explain to our, our listeners yeah. what you do and, and, and well, uh, I guess for why us, different. yeah, stylistic pursuits are everything. You know, we make and have evolved over 167 years many different styles of wine. So one of the major objectives is maintaining integrity and style separation. So that's more of my job than any other component, just keeping things separate, maintaining style differentiation. As a result of that, some of our wines, yes, are from single vineyards, from some of us from single viticultural areas, but the art of blending allows us to transcend the huge ups and downs of vintages. And because we have been a business for 167 years, we have a very medium to longer term view. It's not about just selling a bottle of wine today or tomorrow. Right. People forget, oh, you know, that wine they finished, I've sold that now, relief. Well, no. Each bottle is a time capsule. Exactly. The good wines follow you and also the bad. They, they so, can haunt you. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So at Pitfolds and to this day, in a bad year or a lesser year, we just make less wine. So even with a wine like Grange, in a very challenging year, and we've been very fortunate to be able to make these wines, however, we just make less of them. That's a, that's, I've always said that the hallmark of a great winemaker is what they do, not in a great vintage, but in a difficult yeah, or a challenging vintage. Yeah. If the wines hold up over time, then you know you've got a, you know, a great winemaker and a great raw material to work with. So the 2008, we tasted the RWT Grange. Uh, uh, Grange was 06. Oh, I'm sorry, because oh, yeah, it doesn't come out. 06, RWT. Let's just talk about that vintage yeah. in particular. Because yeah. it yeah. was a big heat spike in 2008. Yeah, from March 3 to March 16, 17, we had 16 days plus uh, temperatures above 35. Wow. More importantly, 12 of those days were above 38. Now, in a year like that, in a region like the Barossa, for example, we were very lucky. Our Shiraz fruits, which ripened earlier, didn't that yet, so we escaped the ravages of that heat. I mentioned in that room earlier, McGill, McGill Shiraz, for example, was picked between February 6 and February 8, okay. almost a couple of the month before the heat even arrived. So you've really got to source and seek out those wines picked before and after the heat. So it's very much 2008, a vintage of two parts. Got it. Now, Cabernet yep. rifles later, we couldn't get great Cabernet out of McLaren Balboa or whatever. So we went south, we went to areas like Funawara, Rogue, Ratton, Woolly, Tatterway. Cool, yep. So having that flex, having that blending flexibility, helps us in really difficult years. It makes sense of consistency. Absolutely. So, House plans. Absolutely. I, you know, I know you're pressed for time. I appreciate the, 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 the five or six minutes we got. Uh, I, I could go on for another 45 minutes, but I know Angela behind the, the camera is going uh, right now. So thanks, uh, Peter. I appreciate it. It's great seeing My you. Pleasure. Thanks, you guys. Know. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to do this in a more... Uh, well, well, quieter setting up. Maybe time next time at the Gill Estate. In situ. The yeah. wines always taste better in situ. <laughs> the last time I was there was 2000, and I think Steve. Steve, Steve yeah. He yeah. took care of me, and yeah. he gave me a bottle of Cellar Reserve Pinot. Oh. Somewhere, I think it was a 90. Well, first finish was 97, so. I think it was 98 or 99. Well, well they're still drinking beer. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a great wine. Yeah. So, uh, Cellar Reserve Pinot, which is uh, kind of the, the passion for the winemakers, keeps you guys interested. Oh, absolutely. Pretty good, pretty good pedo. You'll be, you guys will be impressed. Anyway, thanks for listening. Cheers. Goodbye.